Yeah, I'm very good afternoon to all. Uh, I think I'm an audible to you all. You can able to hear, hear my voice, right? <coughs> yeah, students. So hopefully you can able to hear my voice and you can able to view my presentation, right? Yes. Uh, right. So, so for that, uh, we have gone through the uh, gate coaching classes. Right, so as a part of this, today we are going to be uh, learn about the metrology and measurements. So, Mr. Krishna Raj, Assistant Professor from the Department of Automobile Engineering in the Stan College of Engineering and Technology. So, I'm going to handle this session. Yes, <clears throat> yes, so uh, we can uh, get into this topic now. So our topic is metrology and measurements, right? So metrology and measurements nowadays and engineering plays a vital part of this manufacturing. So as a part of this engineering and um, like in manufacturing part, so Without measurements, we cannot able to produce any components. So if you wanted to convey something to other people, or if you wanted to produce something like a uh, scientific or like an engineering uh, concepts, so that needs and measurements. So that includes a part of the metrology and measurements. So the both the terms are entirely different, metrology and measurements. So as an part, will the uh, I'll discuss later about that what is about the metrology and measurements. So, <clears throat> as an engineering practice, so we have to give proper dimensions or we have to uh, provide a uh, communication in terms of like in measurements, like in length, breadth, height, whatever it is, even whether it is in uh, weight also, that is an included part of this, right? So, on this measurements, so we have to you use the terms called to be some metrology so what is that metrology and what are the measuring instruments that we have so how to handle these equipments okay so uh, what about the precision what about the accuracy what is the difference among them okay so along with that so we'll uh, use the some uh, like in uh, standard terms like in limits pits tolerances okay uh, standard sizes, deviations, okay. So surface roughness, index values, everything we are going to be discuss in this today's chapter, right? So it is a uh, small uh, introduction about today's class. Yes, students. Now we can uh, share upon the screen. It is already in the view. Yes. <clears throat> One second. Yes, I think uh, now the screen is visible. <clears throat> yes, so parallel I can log in and the device also. So, yes, right. So, we'll get into this meeting now, right? So, metrology and measurements. So, we get a kind of uh, like an uh, information about the metrology and measurements. So, these two terms are entirely different. Measurement in terms of like an, whether it is an, like an uh, linear or angular measurements, whether it is an, either it is an uh, units in terms of like in kg, uh, kilogram, weight, 
mass whatever it is that has some measurements so as an engineering practice principles so we have to uh, given proper ma measurements to that so for measuring those things so that includes an uh, measuring gauges okay so even right from the steel rule to the like an uh, cmm uh, coordinate me uh, measuring machine so that is the uh, part to which we have to measure the like and dimensions whether it is any kind of things like an angular measurements or irregular bodies or like an uh, regular or uh, like in linear angular measurements even if it is an uh, included mass weight everything that is a part of this as a part of metrology so we have to uh, set the like in the standard uh, error values that is whether that instrument is uh, precisely used or not okay so that has how much accuracy it is having that how precise the readings are that so these terms so which is a part of this metrology right so not only for this so as a part of metrology that includes the terms like in uh, limits and fits tolerance okay standard deviations like these parts also uh, will be an included part of this yes so the metrology is uh, is the science of measurement okay so the metrology is a science of measurement or like in uh, precision of measurements okay so it can be like in uh, defined in uh, so many uh, words like an accuracy of measurements so all the terms so there is an uh, defines the metrology in terms right so as an engineering purposes so the metrology is restricted for the measurement of like an uh, length angle quantity is most cases right so the engine so on this metrology so it has a wide range of applications so as in scientific applications are there are like an engineering applications are separate okay likewise it has a separate separate uh, like an areas so as a part of our engineering applications it is restricted to measuring of like an length okay angular measurements and quantity quantities in terms of like an uh, weight mass okay so there is an uh, thing so as an uh, metrology and measurements so it is very much important to know about the precision as well as the accuracy so whether the both the terms are same or not na, like uh, it is entirely different precision and the accuracy is entirely different so that comes under the metrology and measurements so what is precision first yes so what about the precision and what about the accuracy so how accurate the answers are how precise the readings are okay so the precision so precision is nothing but it is the repeatability of measurements or reproducibility of measurement in single word so we can define the precision so it is a repeatability of measurement or reproducibility of measurements which means that for example we can take in any kind of examples like uh, you have an uh, like in standard size of 10 mm diameter okay so you can uh, take in a dimension in different different angles so that is used for measuring the diameter so if you are uh, taking the reading for like in uh, 5 times or 6 times so that shows the answers are unique for example 10 10.1 or 9.9 like that if it is having an precise of uh, answers instead of that it, uh, sometimes it is showing uh, like that uh, 9.8 9.6 10.2 uh, like that means it has a wide uh, like in a deviation in the standard values okay so that is uh, not having the precise value okay so the repeatability of measurements and reproducibility of measurements so that unique to the standard values so whatever the number of times given for the dimension is measured by using the given measuring gauges anything that is a screw gauge or vernier caliper or anything that is a measuring equipment if the same dimension is obtained every time is called to be as an repeatability it's called to be as an 
repeatability or reproducibility okay so whenever if you are measuring the uh, particular component okay that shows and uh, like an uh, very closer values to that okay so that should not deviate the like some sort of like uh, tolerable values right so uh, like if it is a 10 mm as a uh, standard diameter if you are uh, repeatability if you are repeatedly measuring the same objects okay it shows like a 9.9 10 and 10.1 means that is okay that has some precise value if it is exceeds more than that okay uh, the deviations are more then it is having low precision value so that particular gauge is need to like an uh, what is that diagonal soffit okay so there is an about that precision i can showing up that uh, some other examples also for that precision so then uh, next one is an accuracy so in single word we can able to define that accuracy is nearness to the true value if you are measuring some particular uh, component okay so that uh, measuring value how nearest to that standard value or the uh, reference value for example if it is having an 10 mm diameter if you are measuring uh, like in vernier caliper okay that shows 9.99 it is very nearest to that if you are measuring by using of screw gauge so that shows like a 9.9 it is having some sort of lesser uh, accuracy than the vernier caliper for example okay i'm uh, telling you and if you are measuring using like a steel rod that shows like a 9.5 means it is having lower accuracy of value right so the nearness to the true value is called as an accuracy okay the true what is the true value uh, like in a standard diameter or standard dimensions what we are given for manufacturing so we know very well about that we cannot able to produce the component exact in dimensions for example if we need a particular component or if we are taking into this piston so we cannot able to produce exactly 100 mm diameter so that might be deviated from the standard value right so that might be deviated from the standard value so that might be like in a 100 or a 101 or 99 mm or 99.5 something else okay so we cannot we we, we may not in, uh, ensure that exactly we can able to produce the dimension it has some deviated values right so like that deviations so will be is the part of this accuracy so if you are measuring some uh, gauges different gauges we have to use, i uh, use different different gauges for measuring single objects okay so the accuracy may differ whether uh, like in a steel rule or vernier caliper or like in screw gauge okay or like in uh, cmm whatever it is so the accuracy of values will be very like as like it is like in a uh, lathe and uh, cnc right so like an accuracy of uh, product right uh, what is this producing So if you are using like a manual lathe, it has more uh, like a tolerance value, right? So if you are using like in a CNC, so it is in a computer-based uh, machine, right? So that gives a more accurate of uh, like in a uh, production value, right? So these precise measurements made by using standard measuring equipments or like a non-error measuring equipments, okay? so like in a standard measuring equipment or non errored measuring equipments even if you are using any kind of equipments so after some period we have to calibrate it when you are bringing up this new one so it is well calibrated one okay so after using that so after handling so that might deviate from the exact standard values so after some times so we have to calibrate it so like in uh, laboratories like in nabl number uh, like laboratories are there so like uh, they are the uh, like in uh, certified people for the like in uh, calibrations okay so they are the authorized uh, like in government approved uh, uh, people so they calibrate the uh, like in these kind of metrology and measuring equipments okay so if you need to get an iso certification or something else so frequently you you need to calibrate the 
equipment because uh, while handling these things, so that that will have some error values as like the standard error values. If you are taken into this like in uh, screw gauge or vernier caliper, okay, so like in zero point zero zero one four and other screw gauge, okay, so there is an uh, like uh, error values. So <coughs> not only for in this part, okay, so uh, like in uh, where it is used, like in based on the environmental temperatures so that will show some error values also okay so in most cases like in these metrology and measuring uh, instruments that are keep in the constant room temperatures so which means that like an air conditioner room in most cases because so if you are uh, keeping these equipments in constant temperature then only it can provides an accurate answer okay so if the temperature difference are there so there will be the difference uh, in the readings also because due to this temperature difference the like in uh, uh, like the materials elongation will be there okay sometimes it will contract sometimes it will elongate something it will have right so due to that even uh, if, whether it is in 0.1 mm so that too will also be called as an errors okay so whenever more than one measuring equipment is involved in measuring dimensions, so the accuracy is very much important. Okay, the accuracy is very much important for measuring the dimensions. So that includes more than one measuring equipments. Okay, so when you are comparing of these tools, so the difference among the accuracy and precision, you can look into this uh, like in a uh, diagram. Okay, so on this diagram. So the first one is like in the center circle, okay? So the center circle is like an exact value, okay? So you can imagine your own, okay? Whether if it is in like in a one mm diameter, so the one mm diameter is a standard value, okay? So that green color dots are the measuring values, okay? Standard value is the center circle and the, like in a, sorry, the blue color uh, circles are the measuring values like four measurements are taken okay so the first one is so the center circle and the outer circle is some of some uh, some far away from the middle part okay so which means that it is not accurate not precise because no one of the particular reading is uh, closer to each other and closer to not closer to the center value okay so uh, which means not accurate and not precise okay then second one if you are looking into this second one so like in all the uh, blue color dots that is a measuring values okay all the blue color dots is grouped together is grouped together which means that it is like in having a precise value because whenever if you are measuring uh, like in four readings are taken right so that all the four readings so which is very much closer to that value like for example so if it is an uh, uh, like one mm is an uh, one mm is too short i can uh, take an as like in 10 mm is an uh, standard uh, value okay so when you are measuring the uh, particular component so like in uh, four measurements are taken so it shows like in 9.91 uh, 9.92 9.93 .9 okay so 9.91 again, which means that, so that shows precise value. That shows precise value, okay? But it is not an accurate because the difference is so large. 9.1, 9.2, and 9.3 is the maximum, right? So that is an, uh, not an accurate, but it has some precise value because all the four readings are closer together. So it has a precise value, but it is not an accurate. Then if you are looking into this four, uh, third uh, diagram, if you are looking into this third diagram, like, so the center uh, circle, so that is a standard uh, value. So all the four measurements, that is very much closer to that standard value, which means that like a 9.9, 9.8, like in 10, again, 9.9, .9, so like that. So which is more accurate and more precise also. So accurate means, 
so the readings are very much closer to the true value right so what is the true value ten mm is a true value okay ten mm is a true value so all the readings which are very much closer like a 9.9 9.8 and again 10 for example i'm letting you know that right so that are very much closer so it is more accurate and more precise so precise means like all the four readings are very closer to the readings so like a 9.8 9.9 like that so if something the readings are like a 9 9.8 10.2 means it is not precise one okay so these are the main uh, difference among them okay so accuracy and precise so these two are the important terms in the metrology and measurements and uh, also the accuracy is not depend upon the precision and the precision also not uh, depending on the accuracy both are independent okay so both are independent in values the next so yes the next phase so the metrology is mainly concerned with so the metrology is mainly concerned with like a unit of measurements okay so it is uh mainly concerned for the unit of measurements ensuring the uniformity of measurements yes so uniformity of measurements if you are measuring multiple of times how you, so how much it is uniformity of answers we are able to getting of this okay so that is an important part in this metrology is mainly concerned so the unit of measurements is how uniformly we can able to get an answers okay and like in you know, developing methods of measurements how to measure the uh, like an you know, irregular bodies for example if, uh, we have an like a length breadth height everything suppose if it is having an irregular bodies so how we can able to uh, measure that particular component we can easily measure it like in mass but we cannot able to find out the outer circumference for example if you are looking into this human uh, body so we have an irregular of uh, body right so how we can able to measure the individual parts of this like in your uh, from the top to bottom so how we can able to measure this so for which we have to develop the method of measurements also so how to measure the irregular bodies also and uh, the next one is an uh, like an uh, errors of measurement the next one is an uh, errors of measurement so like an errors so if we are measuring the particular components definitely all the equipments machineries everything that has some errors which cannot able to produce exactly unfortunately sometimes it will produce but not every time but not every time so even though if you have an uh, uh, like in computerized machineries or computerized measuring instruments definitely all the equipments will produce an error like uh, if you are looking to this like in vernier caliper or screw gauge you know very well about that so uh, the errors will be included as a part of this calculation like in a uh, uh, vernier scale readings okay so while adding of this so we just add upon the like in a uh, standard errors for the vernier caliper like in 0.02 and like in screw gauge 0.01 because so even though if you are keeping in this constant temperature so that has an uh, least count that is called as an least count values so least least measurement value that is uh, capable of measuring that particular values the least measuring value that is an 0.01 and 0.02 for the screw gauge and like in vernier caliper respectively so while measuring of that it has some errors values also okay so due to the climate conditions or something else it will create an errors like in if you are looking into this cnc okay if you are looking into this like in a cnc or lathe whatever the producing machines machinery is okay so that has some tolerance value so how taller uh, how much closer to that uh, true value it can capable of producing the component so how much the deviated values that is an error of values it is having okay then uh, the next uh, it is concerned with the accuracy of measuring okay so we discussed enough about that accuracy of measuring and like an in, uh, industrial inspections and various techniques so like for measuring in very much earlier we have only like in a uh, contact type of measuring instruments but nowadays 
so we have an like in contactless okay like in uh, optical measuring instruments are there like in laser measuring instruments are there so without uh, making any physical contact we can able to find out like an even if it is a single scan so we can able to find all the details like in mass weight or like an overall height overall breadth maximum extensions okay so everything we can able to identify in this part of this like an industrial inspection right yes the next So the next one is in like in uh, what are the like uh, it is having in the objectives of this metrology. Okay, so first we'll uh, discuss about these basic things and we'll get into this like in uh, uh, measuring gauges, like in metrology in terms everything. We'll next further. Okay, so the basic objectives of measurements is to provide an required accuracy at the minimum cost. Okay. So whether the particular equipments or whatever it is, so that needs to provide an accurate uh, values with the minimum cost of production. Okay, with the minimum cost of productions. So to complete the evaluation with the newly developed products. Okay. So keep on, we need to update the entire things. So we cannot able to use and uh, like in older things. So uh, they are keep on measuring even the underwater uh, measuring things are there. If you are measuring into this water, okay, so that readings definitely will be showing up this error. So if you are passing the light rays into this water, that shows in uh, wrong pathways in this. You can try it of this in your home or any, anywhere else. Okay, so taken in water and vessel, you can pass in uh, like in laser light. So the laser light will pass us straight in the app medium when it is getting entering to this water medium so that will be deviated from the actual part so which shows that it will have some deviation in this so in similar way so if you are measuring the uh, particular things in underwater that shows definitely like an error values in most of error values nowadays the huge developments are there for measuring these kind of things then the determination of process capabilities the next is an determination of process capabilities so like in uh, how much it can capable of measuring particular thing whether it is in weight or like in length angle anything or like in, if you are into the cmm what is the maximum height which can able to measure what is the maximum uh, width of particular things which can able to measure okay so that process capability is and very much important in this and like uh, uh, measuring instruments capabilities so like in how, how frequently we, it can able to measure. If you are looking to this particular sensor, for example, I'm letting you know that. So what are the temperature sensor are there? So how frequently it can send the signals, okay? So like that, so if you have some uh, like in computerized uh, uh, measuring gauges, so how frequently we can able to take upon the measuring uh, things, okay? And how precise and how accurate it is in another part also. And so how long, how many measurements we can able to uh, take in into this without errors, for example, the life cycles, okay? So if you are newly buying a new component or a new measuring gauges, so like in 10,000 cycles, like that they are given. So for 10,000 measurements, which provides an accurate, precise value. After that, so that will show some wrong data. So like that, the manufacturers, they are provided the like in a number of cycle periods, like in measuring instruments capabilities that comes under the this and minimizing the cost of inspections okay so like an irregular bodies or like an angular like that so in very earlier so it's very difficult to measure like an angular bodies or irregular bodies but nowadays very simple way so like an image processing has developed a lot uh, and mm -hmm. image pro uh, yeah, Instead of like an, uh, what is that, physical object, you just taken into this uh, physical photo, 
okay so like in uh, photograph so by means of that we can able to develop the uh, dimensions also so likewise nowadays it has developed a lot okay nowadays it has developed a lot in this so like in a uh, which reduces the cost of inscriptions okay so like in uh, easiest way they are developed for minimizing the cost of inscription the next then uh, uh, like an uh, rejections and revokes the next reason like an revokes and rejections so like in, in terms of like in uh, mass productions like in uh, you know very well about this go gauge and not go gauge right go gauge and not go gauge so while uh, going for in mass productions so we cannot able to measure the particular So while going uh, going for a mass production, for example, uh, in the mass productions, so the cylinders are produced, like an IC engine cylinders are produced. So we cannot able to use of the instruments like an uh, uh, depth gauge for all the measurements. So for measuring the depth gauge, we need to sit, okay, in the flat place. Okay, we have to sit and uh, place the engine in the flat place. And we have to keep the uh, depth gauge on the surface of it. We have to sit. It, it does not align anything. Okay. So, and we have to measure. It is a, a simple way. I let you know that. So, in the mass productions, we cannot do and we cannot able to spend that much time for measuring the, uh, like in depth, the diameter, and everything. Instead of that, so we are using like in simplest way, like in go gauge, not go gauge. So the exact dimensions, like they are using like uh, like in special materials, okay. So I let you know that what are the materials and everything, okay. So that materials they are using and uh, like in whether it is in cylinder diameter is hundred mm, so they are produced exactly in the true value size, okay. So on this true value size, they are producing go gauge, not go gauge. So in the mass production, they are simply they are inserting that particular uh, go gauge into the cylinder. If it is entering into this, then it is uh, like an uh, okay. If it is not entering into this means, so it is not okay because the dimension is not in the prescribed value. Like that, in during mass productions, so we have to use some simplest way, simplest ideas for that. So that will ultimately reject and uh, eliminate the rejects and reworks to standardize the measuring methods. Okay, to standardize the measuring methods so how to measuring of this okay we have to set the some standard measuring uh, methods like these are all the step by step procedures like what i stated in previously like go gauge and not go gauge okay and the next one is to ma maintain the accuracies of measurements okay and the last one is like in prepare designs for all the gauges in the special inscription pictures in some cases it means in pictures yes uh, like in previously what i said so if you are supposed to measure the ovality of the cylinders, okay, in the IC engine applications, if you are supposed to measure the ovality of the measurements, you have to set the depth gauge in the different different of angles, like in zero degree, okay, 120 degree, 180 degree, something else. For example, I let you know that. So we have to uh, first initially fix. That zero degree means you have to set the pictures also, inspection pictures. So then only with the reference of that, you can able to change the different different angles also, in the different positions also it is having. So like an inspection pictures, pictures is an important part in this part. So you have to prepare the design of pictures for the pages, right? Yes. So the next is, yeah, yes. The next thing is like uh, we were discussed uh, enough about the metrology, measurements, subjectives, everything, right? The next, so what are the uh, like in unit systems we are following? What are the unit systems we are following this? So uh, we have to 
choose some universal uh, metric systems like you know what is that unit systems so if you are looking into this uh, like an uh, i'll uh, make a comparison with the two different things so like if you are measuring some length so like we can able to say like in millimeters we can able to say in meters centimeters okay feet okay like that so we can able to choose uh, depending upon the uh, like in length of this particular component okay so whether if it is in too short then we can able to say that uh, in terms of an mm whether if it is in medium range we can able to say it is in centimeter if it is somehow a lengthy means in terms of meter if it is uh, more than that means like in feet or something other things are that like so what is the like in uh, common unit systems we are following like in, in terms of like in a uh, time okay seconds minutes hours are that okay so like even if you are looking into this like in some universal concept so like in uh, as an automobile applications if you are looking into this like in ic engines so the power we can able to say that in terms of kilowatt okay in terms of watts in terms of bhp in terms of hp in terms of uh, pedestal ps we have a different different of units are that yes so you may aware of that if you are looking to this uh, like in newer vehicles so the engine power so that will be uh, termed into ps in a, uh, like in 100 kilowatts okay or 1000 watts okay or like in uh, uh, in terms of bhp brake horse power or in terms of ps 90 ps 90 bhp whether it is in same or not it is entirely different so some manufacturers so they are termed to be as in terms of ps 90 ps power some ps means per strike okay then some manufacturers they are termed in terms of like an uh, brake horse power bhp okay so uh, you know the thing uh, brake horse power and horse power is entirely different if you are measuring on this engine power and the flywheel then it is called to be as an uh, horse power okay if you are measuring on the road wheels then it is an brake horse power if you are measuring inside the cylinder that is an indicator power so like that so the units are the important things you have to set some universal uh, values for that okay so that uh, in most cases we are using like in metric system cgs and mks si unit systems okay so on this metric system cgs so cgs is nothing but length is measured in terms of centimeter mass is measured in terms of gram and time is measured in terms of second so centimeter c weight in terms of gram time in terms of second cgs that is cgs metric system yes students yes so once again i repeat the same so the metric system cgs is nothing but so the length in terms of centimeter mass in terms of gram time in terms of second so centimeter c and like in uh, grams in terms of g second c g s then the other uh, unit system we are following that like in si uh, systems okay so like in mks okay mks means so length in terms of meter mass in terms of kilogram time in terms of second mks okay so these two uh, systems we are universally followed in most cases okay universally right the next yes the next is an like a method of measurement okay on this method of measurement so we have two types the first one is an direct method second one is an indirect method okay so on this direct method of measurements okay so like physically we can measure on the objects physically we can able to measure on the objects or like in uh, uh, produce the components where whatever it is okay so like this is a simple method of measurements in which like in uh, the values of quantity to be measured is obtained directly without any calculations okay without doing any uh, calculations like if you are using steel rod for measuring like an uh, length we can get a direct value 
if you are using an like an vernier caliper even if it is having a least count that is not an uh, calculation okay that is an included part just an uh, added multiplication only okay like if you are using like an uh, bevel protector micrometer or like in vernier calipers so we are using of these things this having only simple calculations so we can get an direct values most cases we are using an vernier caliper so you can get an vernier scale main scale reading as like in 19 point something means so if you are adding like in least count as 0.02 not changes in the most values like instead of 19.02 it shows 19.04 for example that right so like it is also called to be some direct values so if you are physically measured on the objects okay you can get a direct readings without any calculations then it is called to be some direct method of measurements direct method of measurements this will have some errors also when we call it as an if you are measuring direct method of measurements definitely as a human so it will have some or like in deviation values okay the next one is an indirect method of measurement of course in the indirect method of measurement that will have some uh, calculations to find out the dimensions not a direct method so indirectly we have to calculate uh, several calculations with this needed so we will see the problems also right so we will see the simple problems for the method of direct and indirect method of uh, measurements okay so how to calculate of it everything all right on this indirect method the values of quantity to be measured is obtained by measuring other quantities so which is relevant to the other factors also which is not directly we can able to get so which is core relevant with the other factors or other quantities so which are functionally related with the required value okay which are functionally related to the required value for example like an angle measurements okay so for measuring the angle measurements if you are using like in uh, like sine bars and others so you need to have some like in a functional uh, related quantities so like slip gauges okay so you have to use some slip gauges also so you have to consider in consider of the slip gauges okay then next is in like in length height measurements for calculating the angles so with the help of slip gauge you can able to find out the uh, angle of the particular components okay so which has a functionally uh, relevant uh, required function related okay required values right so the other examples like in uh, like in measuring of pitch of the screw okay so for uh, nuts and bolts and others okay nuts and bolts and others which is having that so like in pitch of the screws okay so by using like in three wire method okay so that needs and like uh, several calculations for calculating the pitch of the nuts and bolts okay so uh, of course so uh, we can uh, study in this subject like in dme so we, uh, we have an calculations for calculating the pitch circle pitch everything right so we'll see in uh, further this the next so i here with a list of the some of the measuring instruments and their uses for the engineering applications the first one is a steel rule you know very well about that steel rule so it is an instrument in geometry which is used to measure like a length breadth height everything for the specimen okay so steel rule it is a direct method of measurement doesn't need any calculation and other things so use for measuring length breadth height everything the next is on surface plate surface plate is nothing but it is a kind of granite okay surface plate is nothing but it is a kind of granite stone okay so which surfaces are more smooth and and like it is having in the surface value is very lower for testing of most flatness values okay so it is a highly polished granite so uh, it is having more smooth and surfaces so the surface index value also will be very lower which means which showing of that so it is an uh, smoother of surface so it are used for testing the flatness so for example like in uh, uh, measuring gauges 
which are placed over this surface plate. Always the surface plate will be keep as a uh, flattened one. Okay, so if you are supposed to measuring the particular component, you, you should not keep the uh, measuring gauge and objects or specimen on the floor. You should keep that particular specimen and to the like in uh, measuring gauges on the surface plate only. Then only you can able to get the accurate value, precise, precise value. If you are keeping on this uh, specimen and to the equipment or measuring gauges on the floor, it will have some surface roughness value, it will have an uneven surfaces that will show an error values or error readings. Even if it is a 0.1 mm, that is an error. Okay. So if you are looking into this like an IC engine application, so in between piston and to the cylinder, even if it is a 0.1 mm, that will lead to engine seizure. Right. So for those kind of applications, we have to concentrate much and more about the accuracy and the precision. The next is a divider. Okay, so yes, we very much known about this divider. It's used for marking circles, arc, like an uh, output uh, lines. Okay, so like in bisecting lines, everything so we can use of this dividers. Not only for this. So if we are supposed to measure the dimensions. So for which also we are using this dividers. The next is an uh, like a tri square. So the tri square is used for most cases for marking and for checking also. So if you are supposed to want to check right angle to each other, whether it is a perfectly 90 degree or not, whether it is a flattened surface is having or not. So for those kind of things like in flatness, squareness, everything. So which is able to measure by use of this tri square. Okay. So the tri square, so which are used to measure the flatness value as well as for the right angle values. So in this tri square, so it will have an uh, like a right angle element. So I'm just marking over there. So like it is a right angle to each other. So which means that 90 degree. Okay. So it is 90 degree. Okay, so on this 90 degree right angle to each other, so what happens if you are supposed to in, in case of mass production? So on this mass production, you cannot able to use some special like an uh, protectors and other things. You cannot able to use. So simply you can use this uh, tri square if you are keeping on the surfaces. So you can able to find whether it is an uh, right angle to each other, and you can able to find out the flatness of the surfaces also in a single instant, in a single instant of time, right? So for which it is used in a tri -spot. The next, inside calipers. So you can look into this inside calipers. So on this inside calipers is used to measure the internal size of objects, whether it is in cylinders and others. So by using this inter inside calipers, on this inside calipers it is looks like an uh, divider okay it looks like an divider but it will have an like in threader portions for measuring the accurate values and the legs it will have an outer projection the legs will have an outer projections for measuring the inside diameter of the uh, internal components it consists of like in two legs so it is an uh, like an uh, not inverted to each other and are connected by means of like in screw mechanism screws and that by tightening and loosening we can able to uh, increase and decrease the length then next is an outside caliper it is just like opposite to the inside caliper for so used for measuring the outside diameter of this external surfaces or external size or outer size of the object so which is exactly measured by means of this outside caliper sometimes you people have uh, my thought of this doubt sir why can't we use like a steel rule for measuring the uh, external uh, that is an outside diameter sir so why can't we use that things so if you are using steel roll so you cannot able to find this center point okay if you are measuring out the center point of this like an uh, what is the diameter exact diameter then you can able to the, get uh, accurate uh, 
uh, dimension. If you are measuring some far away from the center line, then it shows the error uh, wrong data. Okay, so for which you can, if you are using the outside calipers, you can get a more accurate answers, accurate value. The next is an R or leg caliper. R or, or leg caliper. This is used for making in parallel lines. Okay, so from the finish stage. Like in within reference, you have to uh, get into this next one. So you can look into this, uh, like in uh, the right side. Okay, so I just make a mark. So this will be most cases it will be used for as a reference. So within reference of that, you can use with the scribers. So for uh, whether it is a scriber or you can change it into the uh, pencil, uh, something else. Okay, so you can take it into this marking lines. Okay, the next is a vernier caliper. Of course, you know very well about this. Vernier calibers are used to measure like in dimensions of the specimens, like in diameter, length, depth, everything. Okay, so you can uh, it will have an jaws. Okay, in internal and external jaws for measuring the internal diameter, external diameter, even at the uh, uh, other end, it will have a depth measurement blade also. You can uh, use of this for multiple applications so the vernier calibers are used for the measuring of multiple applications of like an internal diameter external diameter depth measurements in normal measurements also we can able to measure of this of course it will have the least count value 0.02 mm okay so the least value which is capable of measuring in this uh, vernier caliber is 0.02 mm keep in this mind Okay, 0 0.02. The next. The next is a micrometer, of course. So the micrometers which are used to measure the diameter of this given specimen. Okay, so by the ratchet mechanism, we can able to tightening and loosening of it. So with the use of the aid of this, we can able to measure the diameter. Okay, even sometimes the length also we can shorten length only. Okay. So, which has a least count value of this micrometer is 0 0.01 mm, 0 0.01 mm. Okay. So, the next is in vernier height gauge, of course. So, vernier height gauge, so it has like an, uh, yes, the, right. So, it has the vertical steel roll, okay, that is in vernier scale. Is attached on the steel rule, okay. So it is in vernier scale. You can look into this. So it is in vernier scale, okay. So that slides vertically on the steel rule. On the another end, it will have an like in height measuring jaws are there. So if the object is placed like this, if the jaws are placed over the surface of this specimen, then if you are looking into this steel rule and vernier uh, scale. So we can get an uh, measurements of the values. So the where the jaws are located. So based upon that, we can able to find the height of this particular. Thing. The next is in slip gauge, of course. So the slip gauge is specified by using of this height only. Like in for measuring the height measurements, the slip gauges are used. Like in top and bottom surfaces of the slip gauges are lapped with the other gauges. Okay, lapped with the other gauges to construct and given height okay so for an unspecified height if you wanted to set particular uh, gauges whether it is any type of gauges whether it is a dial gauge even if it is a dial gauge if you wanted to set the specified height so all the peoples they are used and slip gauges for the height measurements not only height you wanted to set uh, gauges okay so the slip cages are lapped with the each other, other things. Okay. So in most cases, it will be used for in the sign bars. Okay. In most cases, it will be used in the sign bars. So different of uh, like in, uh, sizes of slip cages are there. So different, different sizes are there. So by placing of this sizes, so that is an includer part. So it is a kind of uh, indirect method of inspection. It is a kind of indirect method of inspection. So for measuring an angular inspection, so that needs and like an height, breadth, sorry, no, not in breadth, length, height, that is an important part. Then next is an like an high, uh, like an uh, high point. 
okay hypoid is an important things for find out in how the angles right so like an hypoid angle length height so if you know these three values then only you can able to uh, find out the angles right so for which it needs some slip gauge so easily you can for example so yes i, I am just here drawn out thing right yes so on this diagram you can look into this you can easily uh, yes right you can easily find out the length you can use anything like in a steel rod or something else you are using for finding this portions so from which this point to this point so the length we can able to find out and for the height measurements so on this particular objects so you have to place and slip gauges we cannot able to get an height okay because it is an uh, uh, what is that so the object is like this i mean just to draw on an object okay so this blue color is an object okay so this blue color is an object okay so you have to keep this object in straight so how you can able to keep this object as in straight means you have to keep the dial gauge over there okay in the both places like this okay dial gauge okay you have to measure of this whether it is in flat or not whether it is in flat means now this a uh, particular object is in flat you have to calculate the angle of which is okay so you have to calculate the angle so so for making this object flat you have to add and slip gauge over that like this okay so you have to add and slip gauge then only you can able to keep this object as a straight okay so if you are adding these values so that included part of this slip gauge is okay so it is a relative thing the next so you have to calculate the like in hypoid okay so the hypoid angle you can know this so if you are calculating these three values you can able to get the theta okay so you can able to get the theta value of angle okay so like in a, it is an uh, indirect method for calculating the angle of the particular irregularities okay so for which the slip gauge plays a vital part in this okay so different different sizes of slip gauges are there for increasing the height and making the particular component as in straight right yes the next the next the sign bar of course so simply i said the thing so this one is an actual sign bar okay so actual image of the sign bar you can look into this there are uh, two uh gauges are there so like in a dial gauges these dial gauges yes uh this one one two okay two uh, dial gauges are there okay and uh, so this this one is an uh, object okay so it is an object it is a sign bar okay it is a sign bar and it is a slip gauge this one is a slip gauge so the same will be plotted over here as a 2d sketch you can look into this 2d sketch also so the work piece is an irregular in shape it has some uh, angle we don't know what is the angle but uh, we want to measure the angle right so that work place is placed over the sign bar okay and on the top of this it will have an two dial indicators so we have to set as a flat which means that both are getting in the same answers right same readings the next so for making up this flat so you have to add the slip gauges okay on the bottom of this sign bar any one place okay so if you are adding the slip gauges okay the uh, dial gauge values will be varied if you are adding uh, one by one means so the dial gauge values will be getting varied in this so anyway you have to keep this workplace as a straight okay so if you are adding like this so at the end the work is uh, is placed as a straight okay so we can able to get the total slip gauge height okay so how many slip gauges are uh, added so the total value we can able to get and you know the sign bar uh, distance uh, i am just plotting over here okay so from this point to that point okay so you know this uh, length also so this you know very well then the hypoid value so this hypoid value also 
you know this sine bar so, so how much angle it is so if you are calculating this by means of this calculation you can able to get the theta value yes you can get the theta value so so it is an uh, like an inverted method okay so inverted method means so the, it is just opposite to that so if you are calculating this theta then ultimately you can able to get the alpha value over here so i am using different colors for better identification so here the alpha value is you can able to find out this opposite to that, right so the sign bar is used for like in conjunction with the slip gauges blocks okay for the precise angular measurements okay angular measurements okay so either it is for very accurately or like in phase located at any work place on the given angle offering to the high degree of accuracy of measurements so like anyway uh, the work place is need to be placed over the sign bar and we have to add the clip gauges values for that yes then the other method for measuring the angular measurements so in uh, slip in sign bars so in most cases it will be used for measuring like in regular objects so like in some flattened objects okay some flattened objects and that too also like in uh, uh, some limited size okay so we have to place the particular object over the sign bar and that uh, needs to be placed over the like in surface plate like in the uh, i shown previously like in that uh, granite marbles right so like uh, there has some flattened surfaces so this sign bar is placed over that because there is a flattened part so the sign bar is placed over the sign bar so the work piece is placed and the slip gauges are added so if it is an uh, larger in size or irregular in uh, areas are we need to measure in some critical parts for angular measurements so it will be used for universal bevel protectors okay universal bevel protectors so which two also measured for angular measuring device okay so like an uh, uh it, it has some uh, vernier scale readings along with the accurate angle attachments okay so you can look into this diagram then it shows an easiest way okay so it has a blade okay i'm just uh, putting a tick mark over there so it has a blade okay so on this blade one end it is having a 45 degree so this end it is having a 45 degree angle and okay this end it is having a 60 degree okay so it is a universal one okay so on this well protected right so on this blade it is an expandable one okay so you can expand and you can decrease uh, based upon the uh, applications so internally it will have an expand and contract mechanisms so why it is made like in 45 degree and 60 degree angles na because if you are supposed to measure some internally components so if you are providing like in sharp corners like in 45 degree in the other so which is able to get an exact accurate values if it is not means sometimes so that will not provide an accurate of uh, measurements right then this blade is attached with the circular component called to be as a turret okay so it is called to be as a turret this circular component okay so on this turret it will have a main scale reading as well as uh, the vernier scale reading so main scale reading this blue color and vernier scale reading is this in green color right so this blade is attached with the turret on this turret it will have a main scale and vernier scale reading so the center part is hinged with the center median okay so based upon this center point it will uh, like in uh, either it will uh, rotate or it will uh, have some angular deviations also okay so and the remaining thing these are all the main body and it is an like an working edge okay it is an lock nut and everything for adjusting height length and other parts so this is the main part so this one is a main part of this okay so if you are supposed to rotate or if you are keeping this blade on this particular surfaces so i'm just creating some faces over here so yes 
I'm just drawing in black color, okay, guys. So it is an actual surface of my component. I'm just place place over there, and I'm just keeping the blade over the surfaces of the specimen. Now it will have some angular deviation. Yes, it will have some angular movement. Right. So based upon this angular movement, so that will be have some vernier and main scale readings. You have to note it on this vernier and main scale reading. This one or this one. Something else. It will have a main scale and vernier scale reading. So according of which, in where earlier it will have a zero. Now it will have some readings. So that readings will be directly used for calculating the angular deviations. Right. Yes. So these are all some of the like an uh, construction and other things. I just eliminated of this because I'll explain earlier. So these are all some of the application wise. So how the bevel protectors are used. Okay. So in the application wise, how the bevel protectors which are used for that. For example, so it is in base, right? So on this base, so this particular I am just making as a pink color. Okay. So this particular angle, which which is which are used for measuring the angles. So on this application, so you can look into this. This blade is rotating, and this blade is placed over the what is the measuring value? What is the measurable value thing? Okay, what is the measuring specimen? What is the face uh, of this particular specimen? So they just place this blade over there. Okay, and the base will be always be in flat. Okay, so within reference of that. So how much angle it will be tilted or rotated? So based on the vernier and uh, main scale reading, so it is just calculated the angle. And the second uh, application, so actually it is over. Okay. Then uh, next one, the first image. Okay. If you are looking at this first image, so it has some sort of like what is the chamfer angle, right? So it is called as a chamfer angle. So it is same kind of angle. It is placed on the opposite side. So, because on the opposite side, the bevel protectors are placed. Okay, that chamfer angle we need to calculate of that. So, for which the base will be always keep in flat. Okay, and the blade is placed over the chamfer angle. Okay, and how much deviations between this main scale and the vernier scale reading? So, will be calculated for the finding of this chamfer angle. The next third object. So, third object is entirely different because the first two two examples are the Specimen is too large, right? In the first two images, the specimen is too large, so the bevel protectors are to be placed over the specimen. Bevel protectors are placed over the specimen for measuring the angle. But in the third case, so the object is too small, so they are added the attachment and the specimen. So I am just highlighting over this. So it is a specimen. So it is a specimen, right? So this specimen is placed over the bevel protectors, and the blade is placed, and which is always keep in black. So the angular measurement is measured on this. Yes. The okay, next. The next is a CMO, coordinate measuring machine, right? So it is an advanced mechanism. So coordinate measuring machine for uh, measuring the right and irregularities of shapes. So like as a human, if you are standing in front of that, it can measure the accurate uh, like an uh, uh, like what is that coordinate points or like an end points of the human beings. Not only for that, I'm just uh, letting know other examples. So whether it is any irregularities of the objects, so with the help of like in different mechanisms like a probe or optical or lasers, so which can able to find out the node points okay so as a node point it stores on the computers so afterwards it can uh, develops into the 3d objects or like an uh, images 2d images or 3d images 3d node points or like in wire frames okay like that it can develop uh, furtherly next next things okay so on this coordinate measuring machine uh, which works uh, like in same like as a finger okay so like we have finger we have an uh, sensitivity right so uh, if you are closing your eyes and if you are tracing your fingers on particular objects you can able to imagine yourself 
so what is the object or what is the particular thing uh, you are tracing out right as a human we know very well about that uh, about the sensitivity so just uh, trying of that right so closing our eyes and we just trace our fingers on the surfaces so similar way so on this coordinate measuring machines it has and props okay that props so will records the particular position in terms of like a node points or like an uh, set points set values like that okay so each and every deviations it will uh, create an uh, set point values okay so all the set points even in uh, three axis x y z okay x y z so all the measured points on the work pieces will be recorded through the probes the probe will uh, like in follow the outer of the entire uh, specimen okay on the specimen entire specimen the probe will follow and that will records the uh, points okay so afterwards all the points which are correlated with that that will either it will make it as an wire frames or like an uh, uh, 3d objects or uh, 3d images okay so whichever we need it okay it is directly connected with the 3d printer something else so after measuring of this directly it will given for the 3d objects 3d printing also it will be up okay so it is an advanced mechanisms uh, at which we are using now, right now so which is most cases which are used for measuring irregularities of objects because in irregularities of objects so we cannot able to measure the exact values for example if you wanted to record or register our case so we cannot able to say that what is the like an uh, dimension of particular things but with the use of this cmm we can able to uh, identify the, the dimension charts so with the reference to anywhere else for example you have to register by you, yourself in the cmm and if you want to know the distance between the eyes okay so we can able to identify the distance because it uh, register the node points right so you, if you are selecting the node points we can able to find out the dimensions or angles whether you are both eyes or in the uh, like in a straight or something it will have some lower and upper uh, like that you can everything you can able to find it of this coordinate measuring machines so in advance of that okay so in advance of that in earlier it will have an props like that but nowadays it will have uh, some more than advanced mechanisms like an uh, optical or laser or uh, like an uh, direct white light mechanisms okay so what uh, that for measuring this because the probes will take more time to register the node points okay the probes will take more time to register the node points depending upon the size okay depending upon the size it will take more time but like an optical at an instant time okay so it will send an optical rays okay so to that particular objects and it will register the like an end points okay similar like that laser lights also and white light is simple mechanisms so the white light white light is passing on the objects at the back end so like an image reflection are there in black color right so that is a register and that will be taken in as an uh, output okay it is a very simplest mechanism but uh, the internal things will not be registered over there. it will have some drawbacks okay but not in that much okay so like in uh, that black part will be registered as an object the remaining is an like an uh, what is that empty space like that it will be registered so in most cases like in optical is an uh, used optical and laser is and successful in this okay but uh, still right now we are using the probes okay because the probes will register more accurately like an in internal components whether it is having so i'm just showing over here so it is some kind of blocks okay so like an engineering application so inside that it will have an like in a passage like this i am just highlighting here sorry yes 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 so you are looking into this so these internal depth cut everything so will be accurately registered by using of this probes and comparatively other optical and lasers okay so even optical also that will register but so we can get in more accurate of this in this probe method yes make the next yes with this the like an uh, what is that metrology uh, like in basic parts are over
The next is like an interchangeability. Interchangeability is like that, uh, like in metrology terms are associated with the measurements. What are the terms which are associated part of this measurements? Like in, uh, it is called to be an interchangeability. There are like identical terms with this, identical items within the prescribed limits of sizes. Okay, within the prescribed limits of sizes. Yes, uh, students, you know very well. So we cannot able to produce and component exact and dimensions, right? Exact of dimensions. So we cannot able to produce the particular component. For example, if you have one or two produce and uh, uh, like a uh, circle, okay? So shaft, something like that. Okay, if you have one or two produce and uh, shaft, so that will have a 10 mm diameter, okay? So 10 mm diameter, two meter of length, okay? So you, it, it is not at all possible to produce exactly 10 mm, two meter of uh, dimensions. So that will have some deviation from that value, okay? So even though the development of machinery is, so it is not possible to produce exactly. And when it is in mass productions, not uh, uh, able to produce exact dimensions for the, all the components. That will have some variations. So we have to set the variations. Okay, we have to set the variations. So that is an allowable one. We have to set the variations that are allowable one. For example, I just wanted to have an, a component that is 10 mm of diameter means. So the allowable diameter is like in uh, either 10 plus or minus 0.5 mm, which means that, okay. So I'm just writing over here. Oh, I'm just need a component uh, like an uh, 10 mm. Okay, 10 plus R minus 0.5. Point 0.5. Point okay, so which means that, so I know very well I cannot able to produce exactly 10 mm. Okay, instead of that, so I, uh, I just provide the tolerable value as 10 plus or minus 0.5, uh, which means that 9.95 from 9.95 to 10.5, okay, 10.5 mm. So within this limit, if the component is produced, then it is an acceptable one. That might be 9.95 or like in uh, 9.96, 9.97, 9.98, 9.99, 10, 10.0, uh, like in uh, 0, 0.1, 0, 0.2, 0, 0.3, 0, 0.4, 0, 0.5, right? So within this limit, if the component is produced, then it is an acceptable one. So all the machineries, all the machine manufacturers, they are uh, given the, like an accuracy of the particular uh, machines, right? So if the accuracy of the particular component is produced, within this prescribed value, okay, within this value, so it is an acceptable one. Yes, of course, we given some, uh, like, a tolerable value, right? We give some, uh, like, an, uh, what is that, relaxation in this values. So not we are asking exactly 10, instead of that, so we give some relaxed values, like, in plus or minus 0.5 mm, right? So, of course, so while doing mass productions, so the values which lies in between of this, okay? So these are all the important terms which are used like in limit systems. So that includes like in uh, nominal size, basic size, actual size, limits of sizes, allowance, tolerance, okay, uh, deviations, okay, so on so factors are that. Okay, so we'll be discussed uh, one by one. Okay, yes, students. The first one is a nominal size. Okay, the first one is a nominal size. Before into this, you can look into this image. First, you can uh, read this image now. Okay. So then only you can able to uh, make realizing of that what is the difference of nominal size, basic size, actual size and everything. Okay. So first read this uh, image. Okay. It will uh, take in around uh, uh, 10 to 15 seconds. Then you can able to identify, correlate with the terms also. Yes. Yeah. 
yes students right okay the first one is an on the terms used in the limits of systems the first one is a nominal size okay so what is the nominal size you can look into this images okay so on this images okay it will have an hole and shaft okay the shaft is inserted in, in inside the hole okay highlighting over here as a blue color okay so it will have some dimensions over here okay so like 20 plus 0 minus 0 0.004 mm like that they are given the value which uh, or else the next example okay if you are looking into this next example over here 20 plus 0 0.002 minus 0 0.002 on which, okay, the 20 mm is the nominal size. 20 mm is the nominal size. Okay, so what is the dimension which needed for the particular uh, specimen or component? That uh, dimension is a nominal size. Okay, the next is a uh, basic size. Basic size, of course, we know very well we cannot able to produce exactly 20 mm as a diameter. So we have to give some uh, tolerable values, limits, right? 20 plus or minus some sort of values. 20 plus 0 0.002, 20 minus 0 0.002. If this included value, this is called as a basic size. Okay? So this is called as a basic size, right? So the 20 mm is a nominal size, so which are exactly we needed, what we needed. To produce the particular component. For example, I need to produce this shaft, or else if you are looking to this like an application, so you can consider it is a piston. Okay, so I just wanted to produce the piston exactly on 20 mm as a diameter. Of course, I know very well. So the machine and the tools which has some uh, like an accuracy or error values. So depending upon the material also, so the surface uh, roughness will be different. Yes. So, like in the earlier, we have a cast iron uh, uh, engine materials. The cast iron is, will have a higher surface roughness values. So, we cannot able to get more accurate of uh, dimensions because, like, you do have an uh, like an uh, uh, roughened surfaces only. So, we cannot able to get more soft and surface. Now, nowadays, we are using aluminium alloys, right? So, so that only we can able to achieve uh, more accurate of dimensions uh, at present now. Right. So it is just for an example, right? So on that nominal size, what is the need or what is our desired value? 20 mm as a diameter, there is a nominal size. So we have to give some uh, like a uh, plus or minus values. That is in 20 plus or minus 0 0.002. That included values is called as a basic size. Okay. So we just convey this to the uh, manufacturers. So I just convey 20 plus or minus 0, 0. 0.2 uh, mm. Uh, it is a tolerable value. I just convey this to the manufacturers. They produce the particular component, either CNC or lathe, something else. Afterwards, I'm just getting that value. I'm just getting the component. Okay, I just measured the value of this particular component. I'm getting 20 plus, that is uh, 20.002. Uh, that is a tolerable value, right? So after machining, okay, after machining, I'm measuring that particular component. That size is called as an actual size. Okay, actual size is after machining. So what you are getting after machining? So if you are measuring the particular component, I'm just getting the value as 20 plus. That is in 20.002 or 20.001. Okay, or 20. Okay, so anything else in between the values. Okay. Anything else in between the values are like a 19.998. Okay, so 19.998, 19.999, 20, 20.001, okay, 20.002. In between these values, if you are measuring that particular component after uh, machining, okay, so what is the exact value you are getting after machining? That is an actual size. Yeah, students, clear? So don't be confusion, don't make any confusion in this nominal size, basic size, and actual size. 
okay so the nominal size is what is the size you needed whether it is in 20 mm or 100 mm or like in 50 mm that is a nominal size basic size is that is the included of like in uh, tolerable values okay that is a basic size actual size is nothing but after measuring the particular component what will be the actual size of this particular component after machining so while getting in your hand after machining what you get in this actual size okay that is an actual size the next so is limits of sizes the next is an limits of sizes so like an upper limit or lower limit maximum limit or minimum limit right so the limits of sizes so we'll have an upper and a lower limit or maximum and minimum limit so if you all are looking to the same uh, example is the i'll just putting tick okay so if you are looking to the same so maximum and minimum limit so the actual that is a nominal size is 20 right the nominal size is 20 and the upper deviation is like and what is that 0.002 that is in 20.002 is the upper limit or the maximum limit until that i can able to accept this and the lower limit is like in 19.998 19.998 that is in 20 minus 0.002 that is what here it is given right that is what here 998 okay yes so what happens so in between the value of 19.998 to the 20.002 i can accept the particular component after production or after machining okay so it will have some upper value it will have some lower value from the nominal size nominal size is 20 upper value is 20.002 lower limit is 19.998 it is about that upper limit and lower limit commonly it is called to be as a limits of sizes or maximum limit minimum limit right so from that it will have another two uh, uh, dividend of that that is an unilateral tolerance bilateral tolerance okay unilateral tolerance bilateral tolerance before that we make sure that what is about that tolerance what is tolerance before that okay the tolerance is nothing but it is the algebraic difference between the upper and the lower limit it is the algebraic difference between the upper and lower limit for example so for this uh, instead of uh, like an application upper limit is 20.002 lower limit is 19.998 okay so the algebraic difference between upper and the lower limit is called to be as a tolerance what is the tolerance value 0.004 right 0.004 is the tolerance value so i can able to tolerate the particular uh, machining component or production components with a tolerance of like this much value okay so this much value so the algebraic difference between the upper limit and to the lower limit is called to be as a tolerance on this tolerance it will have an two divisions or uh, dividends that is an unilateral tolerance mm-hmm. bilateral tolerance uni means single okay bi means two right so keep in this mind so on this unilateral uni means single right so either positive or negative okay uni means single any one direction so which means so 20 as a nominal size right so on this particular example 20 is a nominal size on this unilateral tolerance any one direction tolerance will be given 20 Plus zero point zero zero two minus zero, which means that so twenty point zero zero two, okay, from twenty. Here we will learn twenty from the twenty learn the the next twenty point zero zero one twenty point zero zero two, okay. So between this value, so twenty as a lower value, upper value is twenty point zero zero two. So any one directions or else. in the uh, different like an uh, opposite side 20 as the maximum minimum value is 19.998 any one direction either positive or negative that is called to be as a unilateral tolerance on this bi bidire- directional okay bilateral tolerance okay 
bilateral tolerance that is included in both the direction positive and the negative value both positive and negative values like in 19.998 is in lower 20.002 as an upper value right so it has an bilateral tolerance right the next allowance the next is an allowance so what is that allowance so we can able to get the allowance between the two mating components so when it is having two mating components then only we can able to find out the allowance okay so without of the mating components we cannot able to identify the allowance so when it is having two mating components either shaft and the coupling or something else okay so we can able to get the allowance we can look into this uh, diagram i'm just making in circle okay so allowance right so here in this diagram it will have two mating components as shaft and the hole the hole is larger than the shaft right so on this shaft and hole both will have an upper and a lower limit right so shaft also will have an upper and lower limit hole also will have an upper and lower limit so the allowance is nothing but it is the algebraic difference between the upper limit of the shaft to the lower limit of the hole because the shaft is inserted inside the hole so hole lower limit and the shaft upper limit in between the distance is called as an allowance in between the distance is called as an allowance you can look into this diagram we can able to uh, identify easily it is represented clearly okay so even so through this diagram it's represent clearly about that allowance so the shaft is inserted inside the hole so you can take it as a very good examples like in pen and cap okay so in between the pen and cap there will be a small gap that gap is called as an allowance okay so it's a simple example okay so if you are looking to this like in a, a normal refill pen okay in between the pen and the cap there will be in a, a some amount of a considerable amount of gap if you are looking to this like in hero pen and others so the cap is very tight uh, tighter when uh, when you are uh, depressing of it right so when comparatively so that refill pens will have more allowance right so which is technically we can say that like in a, what is that shaft upper limit to the hole lower limit the difference is called to be as an allowance whenever the question will arise what is allowance so you have to consider the pen and cap right so like that examples if you have you can able to find of this yes the next yes the next is called uh, tolerance zone okay so it is nothing but so it is highlighting here as a pink color you can look into this tolerance zone is nothing but the area or the zone between upper and the lower limit is called as a tolerance zone so if you are represent in the image or if you are represent in diagrams schematically okay so the area or the zone between the upper and the lower limit that is a tolerance okay the difference between the upper and the lower limit is called as a tolerance that particular area if you are highlighting here is some pink color that zone is called as a tolerance zone the next is a zero line so when we have zero line where we are looking to the zero line now when we have two mating components like in uh, shaft and hole the zero line is very much important okay so for example i just uh, uh, create some scenario okay so i am just having a pen and cap which one is the reference for measuring the uh, upper and lower limit because cap will have a more larger diameter pen will have a lower diameter than the cap okay both are inserted okay so for both cases which one has the zero line which is which one is the center line we don't know of that okay because so the pin will have an uh, their own uh, center line and cap will have their own center line based upon the dimensions so for both cases it will have an common line that is called as an zero line okay so
so manually we cannot able to find it out but in uh, while making an uh, technical drawings that is an engineering drawing you have to provide proper zero line then only you can able to produce that pop uh, component if you are not provide the zero line it is an uh, like an uh, what is that uh, it is an wrong data they can't able to produce the par uh, particular component because when you have both <coughs> mating components you must provide the zero line with an reference to that zero line they can able to set the upper limit lower limit for both mating components as a hole and a shaft because uh, both the things are mating right so both are inserted in, uh, together right so it will have some common uh, line reference line so that is a zero line with the reference to that for shaft and hole they will calculate the upper and lower limit based upon what you are given right that is a zero line so don't make any confusion in this you just look into this first image i'm just uh, using of uh, blue color line okay so yes you can look into this so on this hole the center line will be having what is that somewhere aware of that and the shaft it will have some their own its okay but in this uh, second image if you are looking into the second image both are mated together it will have the common zero line yes you can make a comparison with the first image and second image okay on the second image it is mated together it will have a common zero line so because that is a central line okay the next is an upper deviation lower deviation so from the zero line what will be the maximum limit that uh, uh, deviations is called as an upper limit lower deviation similar like that from the center line okay from the zero line okay from the zero line okay you can look into this diagram also so upper deviation what is the maximum of uh, tolerance it is given what is the maximum of uh, limit it is given okay the difference between the maximum limit to the center line there is an upper limit okay similar like that for the lower deviations also from that center line or from that zero line if you are measuring the upper limit value there is an upper deviation deviator value from the uh, nominal size for example i am just needed an 20 mm diameter right on this diagram 20 mm diameter is i am just needed of that i just needed 20 mm diameter from that center line if you are looking to this what is that 10 mm as a diameter right so, sorry 10 mm as a height okay so like in radius okay so it is a 10 mm radius so nominal size is needed 10 mm radius nominal size is needed but so that is included with the tolerance that will may be 10.1 for example okay that is an upper limit suppose if it is a 9.9 means it is a what is that lower deviations lower deviation okay so yes the next so we just very closer to the time okay so i'm just making in fast the next is in fits okay so fits is nothing but the degree of uh, looseness or tightness simple okay so nothing uh, more definition for that the degree of tightness or loose looseness is called to be as in fit whether it is tightly fit or loosely fit okay so if you are looking into this like an uh, pin and cap or like an uh, shaft and coupling or piston and to the cylinder these are all the very good examples that is exactly resembles to this okay so the fits are classified into three type of fits the first one is in clearance fit second one is an interference fit third one is in transition fit okay so the first one is an clearance fit okay the first one is an clearance fit first you can look into this diagram also then you can able to identify of this i let you know that uh, examples also parallelly okay so on this clearance fit when you have an two mating components okay so don't look into this uh, like in definition this will make sometimes confusion over there okay so when you have an uh, two mating components okay so when the clearance between the mating components are two maximum then it is called as a clearance fit the example is pen and cap 
okay so you can insert the uh, cap on the pin okay it will uh, it will have some uh, considerable uh, clearance between that you can insert like in paper or inside of that that much clearance it will have right so that is a clearance fit okay so that will have slides and everything that will oscillate longitudinally also okay so that is a clearance fit technically we can say that it is the difference between the minimum size of the hole to the maximum size of the shaft right minimum size of the hole to the maximum size of the shaft it will have a maximum clearance right so that is about the clearance fit so don't uh, be confused in this just keep it in your mind pen and cap is the clearance fit the next is an interference fit so on this interference fit is nothing but shaft and to the coupling okay interference fit is nothing but shaft and to the coupling so it is the difference between the maximum size of hole and to the minimum size of shaft which means that it is an overlapping which means that it is an overlapping okay because the hole diameter is more than that of the shaft diameter then you might have a confusion on this sir how it is able to insert inside of that yes so it is not mean that much and more deviations for example the whole diameter is the whole diameter is 10 mm okay the shaft diameter is like an 10.001 or 01 that much only okay not uh, much and more variations so if the whole diameter is 10 mm the shaft diameter is 10.01 or 10.1 mm it, it is in considerable amount even though if it is in considerable amount if the shaft diameter is more than the hole diameter it cannot able to insert inside of it then what is the probability of uh, uh, making and uh, mating these two components it is in press fit it is in press fit what is that press fit it is nothing but like an uh, uh, they are making the edges as a chamfer okay so uh, by doing this tampering angle so some part of this will be inserted then after they are continuously blowing off it or they are continuously hitting on this surfaces so what happens so it is press fit will be there okay so it is tight fit or press fit or interference fit everything are same once the components are mated together we cannot able to separate it again okay that is an interference fit the examples are like an uh, shaft and to the coupling okay the examples are shaft and to the coupling so once if they are making as an fit we cannot able to remove it again so sometimes it is otherwise called to be as an permanent fit also okay sometimes it is otherwise called as an permanent fit also the next is an transition fit third one transition fit is otherwise called to as an tolerance zone okay tolerance zone so the very good example for this transition fit is like an uh, piston and to the cylinder piston and to the cylinder is a very good example for transition fit transition transition transit okay so always be keep in this mind guys so this will make you remember whenever when you recall the data transition transit okay so transit means it will have some movement okay so when you are using like in uh, some softwares like in cfd and others so transit conditions like that we are using transit means it will have some movements so like in uh, piston and to the cylinders in between the clearance so that fit is called as a transition fit because that will slide inside lee it will have minimum clearance okay sometimes it will uh both cylinder and piston will have the same dimensions also due to this heat and other applications but it will slide but it will slide because we are lubricating and some other factors also be there so the transition fit is uh, uh like in you know, what is that it is a uh, kind of a, like an overlap or like it will have some transit so it is in between the fit of like in clearance and interference fit it is an in between stage of that clearance fit will have more clearance volume interference fit is an over size of components that is a mating component shaft and hole the shaft diameter is more than that of hole so it is a permanent fit or what is that press fit but in transition fit it will more nearly to the equal size but it will have some transit conditions okay 
the next the next is a whole basic system shaft basic systems so simply uh, for the manufacturing of particular components either they are keeping the diameter as constant any uh, hole or shaft basic system okay so i am just highlighting over here as a hole and shaft depending upon the mating components it will differ for learning purposes i am just showing hole and shaft but uh, application wise so it will be different but the concept is whether it is a hole basic systems the hole diameter is keep as a constant and the shaft diameter will be varied based on the clearance transition interference fit okay based on the clearance transition and interference fit shaft basic system is shaft diameter is keep as a constant and the hole diameter will be varied depending upon the clearance transition and interference fit okay so it is about the hole and shaft basic systems so is the next is standards of limits and fits okay so yes of course so universally we have to follow the standards right so for example in india we are producing some components that is an universally acceptable one for example if you are looking to this nuts and bolts so you can able to get an m12 size but you cannot able to get an m13 right you can get an size of m12 size of nuts and bolts you can get but you cannot able to get m13 because it is not universally used so like that you have to whether it is a shaft nut bolt reverse okay so like in drive shafts or something whatever this is an engineering applications you have to follow the universal uh, like in dimensions okay so then only it is a universal acceptable one okay so if you produce an uh, your unique component means no one will buy your components so for which it will have one standard systems of limits and fits okay so for each components or each particular part it will have their own uh, standards like in rivets it will have uh, standards of size nuts and bolts it will have a standard of size even if you are looking into the shaft based upon the load power rpm according to that it will have an uh, standards of sizes okay so you cannot able to produce your own thing okay even whether uh, it is a drive shaft or something else even uh, the king just everything okay so that is a part of this so the design data book a psd design data book on which so it will provide and clear data of like what is that standards of limit systems for each and every one whether it is uh, shaft nuts bolts rivets sprockets chains okay uh, like in belts everything so it will provide some standard data as based on the standard data so you have to develop you have to do some calculations so that will be taken into this like in design of machine elements on that subjects you uh, you will be doing some calculations for identifying the shaft diameter standard shaft diameters not only for shaft standard dimensions for your designs whatever your designs you have but you have to select the standard dimensions for the all the components okay the next so i am just preparing some uh, problems for you guys but uh, mm -hmm. we have an limited of sort of time so i'm just uh, moving to the next okay surface roughness okay we'll conclude with this guys surface roughness and its measurements so like uh, surface roughness there is a uh, smooth enough surface like in uh, uh, what is that in other words called to be as in like in degree of smoothness okay so if you are producing some components if you are looking into this different different of uh, materials like in cast iron aluminum brass bronze like that so the surfaces of the particular component like we are looking to this cast iron it will have an like an uh, uh, what is that uh, rough and surfaces in the cast iron but if you are looking to this brass or bronze it will have more smooth and surfaces so that variation is judged by the degree of smoothness degree of smoothness right so even depending upon the machineries the surface roughness values will be varied for example if i am supposed to manufacture through this uh, lathe okay that's a more surface roughness value will be having but if you are producing the same component same operations in the 
CNC machine, it will have smooth enough surfaces. So in this part, the machineries as well as the materials will play a vital part in this surface toughness values. Depending upon that, the surface roughness values will be varied. That is a degree of smoothness. Yes. So that surface roughness will be measured by means of two things. The first one is a central line average method. That is in CLA. And second one is like an RMS, root mean square method. Okay. So it is nothing but, so that surface, particular producer surface, so they are keeping into this like an, uh, what is that? So they are zooming into this, okay, particular component. So if you are over zooming off into this uh, uh, surface, you can able to identify the nodes like an up and downs, right? On the surfaces. So if you are zooming into this, okay, you can able to find out the ups and downs. Okay, that is a node points. So you have to calculate this node points that is called as an Y1, Y2, Y3 up to Yn. Uh, how much length it is having until that Yn divided by number of uh, node points like Y1, Y2, Y3 until Y30 divided by 30, right? So the central line average method is nothing but so the central line is drawn for average of this ups and downs like 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 8, like that. So we have a deviation. So if you are looking into this average of these values, so if you are drawn the central line, that is an CLA, central line average method, in terms of microns only, because we cannot uh, able to observe our uh, manual human eyes. So, so in terms of microns only, the deviations are there. Even if you are looking into this more accurate value, then you need to go for an RMS, root mean square value. It is nothing, but you just taken into this uh, square root of this, y1 square, y2 square, y3 square up to yn square divided by n, root of this. Okay, so then you can get more accurate values of this CLA. Okay, CL uh, when compared to RMS, okay, when compared to CLA, RMS will give more accurate value of this in terms of micron. So the symbols that are uh, mentioned over this. So in anywhere else, if you are looking to this engineering drawing, they never put into this like in uh, direct values. They simply put in notations like in symbols. If you have an, a symbol inverted uh, triangle, then the surface roughness value for your producing components will have to 8 to 25 microns. Okay, they are not given any direct value. Simply they can put an inverted triangle on this diagram, which means that the surface roughness you have to provide 8 to 25 microns. Similar like that. So number of symbols if you are increasing like that I am just showing up here. Depending upon that, it will vary. Right? Yes, please. Okay, so now the time is... 429 right so yes i'm here with complete with uh, metrology and measurement case okay so i'm just having some activities like in uh, uh like in uh, gate questions under this okay so i'm just formulating the metrology only okay metrology only gate questions i'm just formulating with you okay so the last so we don't have any time okay so i'm just share this questions to you guys on uh, this group right okay thank you guys